Andrew Jackson's era of good feeling was beginning, but in the bayou villages of Louisiana, medieval superstition still ruled the lives of the simple Cajun people. Witches worked their spells, ghosts wandered through the dark wilderness, evil spirits brought fear and terror. But it was not fear that brought Jim Bowie into Opelousas that day, it was anger. Jim Bowie was mad. you down here? You came down to warn you. Oh, what about? Curly Lambert, this fellow here, used to run this place. Huh? We turned him loose a couple of days ago and... Why'd you do that? Well, because he served his time. Anyway, all the while he was in the calaboose, he kept making threats against you. Said you closed him up and ran him out of town and he's gonna get you for it. <laughs> Curly said that, did he? He's a bad man, Jim. Well, I got something more important on my mind. My sugar cane crop. All the field hands are missing. Curly Lambert's important too. Well, I appreciate you coming down here. Real decent of you. <laughs> well, I thought you ought to know. I'll be getting along. Got to serve a paper down the line. I said, Sheriff, I don't even mind his own business. I had Bowie dead in my sights until he rode up. That's where I want him. Dead in my sights. But I don't want no sheriffs killed. We'll get him some way. I'm gonna open up this place again, Red. And Jim Boy ain't gonna stop me. You hear? Yeah? Monsieur Bowie. Then he'll need a doctor. Let me see him. Oh, no. Oh, no, no, no. He can see no one. Go away. He's sick. Sick? Hello, Louis. What's the matter? Look, if I don't get my sugar cane cut, you won't have enough money to buy food. And <laughs> neither will I. What's the matter with you, man? You're scared. What are you scared of? What's wrong with him? The ghost. The ghost? What ghost? The ghost of Jean too. <laughs> have you seen the ghost? No. Well, of course you haven't. <laughs> Louis, you're one of my best men. Give you a knife and you'd fight a bear. Some story about a ghost that doesn't exist and you, you hide in bed like a baby. It does exist. Yeah? What makes you think so? I saw him. You saw Jean Batu, the pirate, the buccaneer? How could you see him? He's been dead about 20 years. I saw him. Where? Now, come on, man, tell me. You know, if my sugar cane's not cut, it'll rot in the fields. Now, tell me where you saw him. By the bayou. When? Night before last. 
Oh, he's a big man, monsieur. He has a ring in his ear with the big boots in him. Pired hat, and on his belt he has two pistols with a big sword. Oh, I saw him. Well, uh, anyone else see him? Jean, Pierre, Patisse. They see him. So that's why no one's come to work. What's that you got there? What is it? It's an amulet. Charm, isn't it? To protect you from the ghost, I suppose. Where'd you get it? Now listen to me, both of you. There's no such thing as a ghost. And even if there was, this wouldn't protect you. Oh, you mustn't talk like that, monsieur. Now, who told you all this rot? Ask Pierre. Go to him. Ask him why he is not in the field. Am I foreman? Yes, your foreman. Tell him if he dares to go back to work, the others will. Who started this story? Now, come on, tell me. It just didn't come out of thin air. Somebody started it. You tell me who started it, and I'll prove it's a lie. Are hey, you there? Wait a minute. So you're the one's been scaring all the field hands with stories of Jean Batu. Just so as you could sell some fake charms. They give away the evil spirits. I remember you. You're the widow Tanny, and you're her son. My father ran you two out of town more than ten years ago. Now get out and stay out. And leave the folks here alone. That's mine. You can't take it. Jim. Well, the uh, Widow Tanty and Ramo here have been spreading crazy stories about a ghost. A ghost? Yeah, a ghost of Jean Batu. My father had trouble with them some years ago. Now they're back and I got trouble. They've been scaring all my field hands. Then selling them amulets for protection. They even got my foreman frightened. We haven't broken any law. You sure have. What law? Well, uh, scaring people. Selling fake charms, that's against the law, isn't it, Sheriff? Well, I don't know if there's any law against it exactly, but... Well, who's gonna cut my cane exactly with them around? Well, they ain't gonna be around. Law or no law. Now, you take your boy and get back to the bias where you belong. Cause enough trouble as it is. You hurt me. You saw him. I'm gonna get even. I'm gonna kill you. Uh, some other time, Smiley. No, Ramu. We'll leave him to the ghost of Jean Bat, too. He's a wild one. He's a wild cat. Between him and Curly Lambert, you're a candidate for the undertaker. You ought to keep off the streets for a while. I'm glad to, Sheriff. I gotta get my cane cut. Well, if you need me, you know where to find me. Yeah. Get him in here. Get who in here? That old crone and her son. The one that just fought with Bowie. Get them in here. But well, what if they don't want to come in here? Get them in here. All right, Curly. What's the matter with you? 
You've gone crazy. Monsieur Bowie. It is you. Well, who do you think it was? Jean Batou? That is why I shoot at you. What made you think he was coming? A note, monsieur. It was pinned to my door. You and your friends must put a hundred dollars in big oak tree, or two days from now, I come at midnight to kill you, Jean Batou. That is tonight, monsieur. You saw this to the others, to the Lundies? Yeah, they were here when I found it. So that's how it all started. What shall we do, monsieur? But we, we cannot raise one hundred dollars. You don't have to raise it. Who ever heard of a ghost needing money? What would a ghost buy with money? Corn, pone, and grits? Now, here, look, you must believe me. No ghost wrote this. Look, it was written by someone trying to make an easy hundred dollars. No, 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 it is signed. Look. Well, anyone could sign the name. Jean Batou wouldn't object. He's been dead for 20 years. Now, come on. Back to work, huh? No. Come on. No. Unless the money is paid, Jean Batou will be here tonight. We must put the money in the hole in the big oak. Monsieur, lend us the money, please. Hmm. So if you don't put the money in the oak tree, the ghost is coming here, huh? Yes, at midnight. Good. But you are not going to leave me here alone. No, I'll be back before midnight. When the ghost of Jean Batou shows up, I'd kind of like to meet him. Oh. And up here, don't put any money in the oak tree, huh? Sneaking around outside of Pierre Gervais' place. Sit down. He said you'd give us money. Go well, ahead, sit down. Come on, sit down. Who's this uh, Pierre Gervais? He's Jim Bowie's foreman. Oh. Up to your old tricks again, ain't you? We haven't done anything. Oh, no. You're just doing the same thing you did in Lake Heron about six or seven years ago. Only there you got caught. I just sold some charms. We gotta make a living. Oh, you did more than sell charms. You got a hundred dollars out of somebody, and they ran you out of the parish. Now, who did you uh, send the note to this time? That's what I thought. This old witch is clever. What was the name, uh, Bowie's foreman? Gervais, Pierre Gervais. That's it? Pierre, you sent the note to Pierre. And you told him if he didn't come up with a hundred dollars, you'd have the ghost after him. Now, didn't you? When? None of your business. When? Tonight? Tomorrow night? When? You better tell me. Tonight. At midnight. It's not your hundred dollars. That's right. It ain't costing me anything. I just thought it was a good idea. Give him a drink, Red. Get out of here. Both of you. Give me my stuff. Good morning. Yeah. I'll buy it from you. Now get out. Or maybe you want me to take it out and show it to the Cajuns in the village. Open the door, Red. Come on. Go. Get out. Now we're getting somewhere. What are you talking about, Curly? Sit down, Red. We want to get Bowie, don't we? Well, sure we do, but how and where? Well, Bowie went to see Pierre, and Pierre showed him the note. The note said, if you don't come up with a hundred dollars, a ghost will come and get you, right? How do you know Pierre showed Jim Bowie that note? Well, Pierre hasn't got a hundred dollars, has he? No. Well, then he has to ask Bowie to put it up for him, don't he? Yeah, I guess so. Now, if you were Bowie, what would you do? Would you give it to him? A hundred dollars? Not very likely. I'd be more apt to tell him that there weren't no ghosts. What then? I guess I'd tell him that I'd be there with him at midnight when the ghost came. <laughs> You're not as thick-headed as I thought you were, Red. Yeah. Bowie will be there. The ghost of Jean Batou will be there. And I'll be there. Who ever heard of a ghost being accused of murder? I told you I'd get even with Bowie, didn't I? The time grows short, Monsieur. 
here. I beg of you, give me the money to put in the oak. Well, if the ghost doesn't find the money by midnight, he's coming here, isn't that right? Yes, yes, that is the point. I do not want Jean Batou to come here. I do not wish to die. But if he doesn't come here, how are we going to find out who's been writing those notes and frightening people? Hmm? Now, don't you worry, Pierre. Everything's going to be all right. You try and calm yourself. You're not going to die. Here, you want to borrow one of these? No, no, no. no. Thank you, Monsieur. No. No. Not like that man, boy. Come, it will be worth something to see him killed. And after that, the Cajuns will pay. Listen to me, all ye Cajuns! No man faces Jean Batou in this world and leaves to Tel Aviv! He wounded you. I was no ghost. It was a pretty solid flesh and blood man. Didn't you hear him scream when he got hit? Now, come on. No, no, no. I'm not leaving here. You're coming if I have to drag you. But, but where is the ghost of Jean Batou? He's on a pretty solid horse heading for Opelousas, and that's just where we're going. Come on. doors and open up this place again. Get me some water and a rag. Well, he rode into town, but he didn't ride out. He must be in some of these buildings. But which one, monsieur? You ride up and down the street and attract attention. I'll look in the sheds. Curly? Yeah. Somebody just rode into town. Well, nobody knows we're here. So they must be looking for the ghost of Jean Batou. Go in the other room, stand by the window and watch the street. If anybody does come in, we'll, we'll get him in a crossfire.
Look at this. Real obliging of you, Curly, to keep those clothes on. Drop your cutlass. Go on. Outside. I want the folks to meet you. Pierre, tell everybody to come and meet the ghost of Jean Batou. <laughs> Louis! This is Lundy! Come quick, here is not the ghost! This is Monsieur oh, Lundy! No. Come quick! Let him come in! Come here, everybody. That's wild, isn't he? Come on. There's no ghost. No ghost? There's only this man who wanted to kill me so he could open up his gambling hall again. Oh, wait a minute. That wasn't my idea. No? Then whose was it? It was the widow Taddy's. These are her son's clothes. He carried him around that big sack of his. He was a ghost all the time, not me. That doesn't matter. You were the ghost tonight. Now that you all know the truth, I want you men to be in the field early tomorrow. We got cane to cut. Bring the cane. Oh! But the next day, Jim rode into town mad all over again. Not a single field hand had reported for work. We got them, we got them. Look, look, we find them in the bayou. Oh, <laughs> yeah, what shall we do with them? Well, I guess lock them up with Curly till the sheriff gets here. Good. Judy Lockout. Uh, Lois, I thought, uh, thought you were convinced that ghosts uh, don't exist. Oh, but you sure? I am convinced. But what of the ghost? She is not convinced. Oh. Yeah. Oh, Pete. At least you don't believe in ghosts, do you, huh?